While it seems like Team Green is gearing up for another high-end GPU launch or launches, the Radeon Technologies Group is going to be releasing a lower-end GPU to hopefully target the mainstream segment, a market that I feel like has been quite neglected. Let's discuss that in this video. Hey, if you enjoy content like this, drop a like, make sure to subscribe, and smash that bell so you never miss another video. Hey, what is going on guys? Danny here. Welcome back to the channel and I hope you've all been doing well. I know a lot of you guys are burnt out in regards to talking about the GPU market. I mean, who wouldn't be? It's been pretty much impossible to buy a new GPU. They're always sold out, being sold at astronomical prices. You have to either jump through many hoops to feasibly buy one. I mean, to deter miners and scalpers, retailers have been doing these raffles where if you're picked, you can finally buy or order a GPU or they're bundling them with a whole bunch of parts. And, you know, while that might be good for new buyers or new builders, that does doesn't really help those who are simply just looking to upgrade their GPUs. So I know most of you are just turned off by the new GPU hardware topics, but there was some very interesting stuff that came up recently and I wanted to talk about it because it targets a segment which I feel like has been quite heavily neglected. Recently, Igor from Igor's Lab posted some information on their site regarding a new upcoming mainstream GPU from AMD. This being a new GPU based on the RDNA2 architecture and codenamed Navi23 will be a smaller GPU to enter the RX 6000 family. I'll have a link to his article down in the video description, highly recommend checking it out as there is some very interesting pieces of information in there, he goes over all of that regarding specs, power figures and more. Now since this is a fairly small chip measuring at around 236mm square for its die size, it's clear that this will be more so targeted towards mobile solutions, but will make its way over to the desktop in the form of a RX 6600 or 6600 XT. In regards to some quick specs, it will supposedly have a very low TGP of around 90 watts, and will have 8GB of G6 memory, and of course have support for PCIe Gen 4. Now Igor goes much more in depth with regards to the details of the spec, so like I said, if you're interested in reading all about that and its power management information, definitely check out the article. What I wanted to focus on was how AMD will possibly position this card in its product stack, what would be ideal for consumers, and how it will perform. Let's start with the performance. We know that the RX 6700 XT, which was released back in March, ended up sitting in between an RTX 3600. Ti and RTX 3070 being closer to the former. The 6700 XT is also based on the same RDNA 2 architecture, has 12 gigabytes of G6 memory, 96 megabytes of infinity cache, and 40 compute units. The TDP is around 230 watts for the 6700 XT, which I thought was already somewhat high considering the fact that the 6800 non-XT has a 250 watt TDP, but is in another league. Though I feel like Amity might be pushing the silicon past its sweet spot in the efficiency curve. Igor mentions that the 6600 XT will have 32 compute units, 64 megabytes of infinity cache, and a TDP of around 130 watts. So in regards to specs, it does seem pretty well loaded for an entry level card, but I feel like it might end up being a bit slower than where most would expect it to be considering the lower power limit. But who knows, perhaps it might end up being a bit higher at 150 watts. These might be subject to change and they're probably not finalized yet. Nonetheless, I'm sure the 6600 XT should be able to reach at least 2200 or 2300 megahertz boost under load. Taking that into account, I feel like the 6600 XT should at least be able to match the previous gen 5700 XT in terms of performance, which wouldn't be bad at all, especially since it's a mainstream target segment, which is, you know, catered towards 1080p gaming. That would mean it could end up giving something like the RTX 3060 a good run for its money because, remember, the RTX 3060 only ended up matching the RTX 2060 Super, which for the most part was slower than the 5700 XT when it came to traditional rasterization performance. In regards to where it would compare against the 6700 XT, it would probably sit around 20 to 25 percent slower depending on the title of course considering that's how much slower the 5700 xt is that would leave a pretty big gap but i feel like this was done intentionally by amd as they might have a 6700 non-xt plan for release later i remember most were quite surprised that we didn't get a 6700 alongside the 6700 xt but this could be due to a few various reasons such as lower supply and volume but i'm thinking that because tsmc's 7 nanometer yields are so good the amount of 6700s they could get from a wafer depends on how many defective Navi 22 dies they would receive, and I doubt there's many to begin with. So when AMD is selling out constantly of 6700 XTs, even though most agree it's quite overpriced, they'll have no incentive to offer consumers cheaper options, and they're definitely not going to ruin completely good dies for the sake of offering lower margin parts. Circling back to the 6600 XT, with respect to pricing, I would love to see this card in the mid $200 market, because this is a market
market that I feel like has been long neglected by both AMD and Nvidia. And we really haven't seen any good options come out within the past couple of years that have shaken up the market when it comes to good, solid, bang for the buck options. The last two cards to do that, in my opinion, were the RX 480 and GTX 1060. I'm not saying that we haven't had newer cards come out in those price segments. It's just that consumers in those segments didn't really have much of an incentive to upgrade or nothing really good to look forward to unless they could jump up a tier and pay another $100 on top, which isn't feasible for a lot of people. Sure, the 1660 Super and RX 5600 XT offer decent performance, but it wasn't anything spectacular that made an owner of, say, an RX 580 go, oh man, I totally want to upgrade this GPU. And cards like the GTX 1650 and RX 5500 XT were barely any upgrades at all. Now, back in 2016, someone with an R7370 or R9280 would have totally been excited for the RX 480. It was a good worthwhile jump in those same target segments. But because GPU prices have been rising so much, everything had shifted a tier up. So while I'd love to see an RX 6600 XT be priced at $250 or $280 MSRP, AMD will probably sell it for $299 or perhaps even, you know, something like $339 or, or go all the way up to $350, considering they've been getting quite comfortable with the high price tags. It's just the state of the GPU market right now, where even at detestable prices, the GPUs will still sell out, and in actuality, that is just MSRP. We probably will see the card hit retail for well above that, at least close to around $500. So then when you see all the reviews for this card come out, it won't really look all that attractive because sure, it'll perform maybe like a 5700 XT. And like I said, that's great performance. But when you could have bought a 5700 XT back in 2019 or early 2020 for cheaper, it'll undermine any progress they'll have made. Again, not really AMD's fault here because like I said, the market is just so crazy right now that everything is super overpriced. And of course, the manufacturers will take advantage of that. They'd be stupid not to. I mean, if you tried to even buy a used 5700 XT, you'd be paying astronomically high prices for it, which leads us into the topic of, you know, just why people are so burnt out and disinterested in the PC gaming market, because GPUs are just not feasible, but that's more of a topic for another video. I feel like gone are the days where we'll finally see some really good bang for the buck options for $199, like how the RX 480 did, and sent waves across the PC gaming market. But that'll do it for this one. I hope you guys found this video to be informative and helpful. Let me know your thoughts down below. Check out the video description on ways to support the channel and for my other videos. If you guys are interested in more content like this, then make sure you're subscribed. Thanks for watching. Take care and I'll see you guys in the next one.